most journeys, the path of the heroine is not easy. It has no well-defined guideposts or recognizable tour guides. There is no map, no navigational chart, no chronological age when the journey starts. It follows no straight lines. It is a journey that seldom receives validation from the outside world. In fact, the outer world often sabotages and interferes with it. Movement through the stages of the journey is cyclic. And a person may be at several stages of the journey at one time. Women have often been portrayed in our society as unfocused, fickle and too emotional to get the job done. This lack of focus and clear differentiation in women is perceived as weak, inferior and dependent, not only by the dominant culture, but by many women as well. The only thing I can trust is my body. Isolation, a period of darkness and silence and of learning the art of deeply listening once again to self of being instead of doing. I used to sit by the side of the house and watch the roses grow. I could be so still. I could feel life pulsing, smelling and sounding. I know this world. This isn't new. I've been here before and have felt protected. The swamp, the woods, There are my mother. I feel connected to the trees, to the mud, to the grasses and leaves. I never felt alone. I take back that connection. It runs deep. I sink down now into the strata. There are bones in the mud, white, beautiful, porcelain bones. I hold my own skeletal arms and ribs. The bones are the framework. I'm excavating deeper. For the lost parts of myself, I mourn them deeply. Where have they gone? As I pick up these bones, I see glimpses of the mother goddess under the earthen floor. She embraces a daughter. She is not whom I expected to see. She is not wrathful, nor old, nor ugly, but a young woman with light brown hair. She soothes and embraces. She sits and listens and protects. She laughs and sings, her voice like bells. But I am not there yet. I ask my guide to take me down. He takes me down deeper. Then we have gone before and I'm truly afraid that I will drown. I sputter and I swallow too much water as we descend below the swamp. He holds my hands and tells me not to be afraid. He leads me down into a cave. There I see a huge, way-like form encased by a scaffolding built by little Lilliputin man. They are holding her down. She can still move her enormous black tail. It swings back and forth in a strong, graceful rhythm, but the rest of her body is held motionless, spilling over the bars of this underwater hold fast. Nothing about her is missing. I feel her deep sense of sadness. He brings me closer to her, and I am terrified by her power. You can help me, she says. I pull back. No, I can't. Of course you can, she moves. By your presence, they can no longer hold me as each of my daughters comes to me. Of her own free will, I am released. As she says, this scaffolding falls away. The strength of the boss was illusory. Now she arcs her back and her mighty tail sends a tidal wave which undulates across the ocean floor. She swims and we swim with her. She loses her enormous size. She is no longer bloated and grotesque. She is graceful and free. She moves through the water with the grace of a mermaid. Will we continue to carry on? She's 
snow. Mm-hmm.